Now we will get into arithmetic. Arithmetic is basically a memory system. It's a memory system. You want to teach arithmetic, you've got to teach arithmetic facts. Now, in teaching children to count and teaching them to use our, our, our the, uh, the numbers, first, uh, what you want to do is Teach them the numbers in concrete. I would use pennies. So if they see one penny, two pennies, and you, you have the one penny. Two, three, three, four, they count one, two, three, four, four. Numbers are quantity names. That's all the numbers are. They're the names of quantity. You see. So they're and arithmetic is a counting system. In addition, you count forward. In subtraction, you count backward. In multiplication, you count in multiples. And in subtraction and in division, you subtract in multiples. So that's what you want to do is first make sure that they can see what these letters, what these numbers stand for. Prove it to them. One, two, three, four, five. And then write five. Then they don't always have to look at five little things. They see that and they know that that stands for five. Now when you're, when you're first teaching the addition facts, you then teach zero plus one equals one. And you can, you can demonstrate that. You can say, say zero stands for nothing. When you see zero, that means nothing. Well, nothing plus one is one, right? And then you have one plus one equals and of course, what you can do is, is demonstrate that. One penny and another penny. One plus one penny and another penny. There should be a picture of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> and then you have two plus one equals three. You see, and then you demonstrate that two plus one equals three. And then you have three plus one. You're going to make the transfer. You want to make the smooth transfer. You want to prove these facts to the child. You're proving that 3 plus 1 equals 4. He's not taking it on faith. He's actually seeing it. He's doing the counting. And so he has 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. It goes to 12. Plus one, 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 plus one. And then you demonstrate, uh, you make out these tables yourself. Uh, well, 13, And each one you've proved. Now, once you've proven it, once he's seen it, once he's counted once, that's all he ever has to work with that. Now he's going to work with figures. Because he's seen it, he's, it's been proven to him, he's counted himself. He knows that 12 plus 1 equals 13 because he's, he's counted it. He doesn't have to do that single counting, counting by one. Now you want him to memorize this. This, of course, is easy because he will see the pattern. 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 1 equals 3, 3 plus 1 equals 4. He will see the pattern, you see. And then when you want to make sure that he's memorized it, what you do is you, uh, you cover up the answer. You say, okay, what are they? They say 1 plus 1 is 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is... Now, you don't say figure it out. What you do is you flash the correct answer. Because by telling him to figure it out, you're going to stop him and he's going to count by ones. He knows how to count by ones. What you want him is to memorize that 3 plus 1 is 4. And to memorize, you flash the correct answer and cover it back. Until he has, say, he has 7 plus 1 is 9, you 8. You don't tell him to stop and figure it out because that simply delays memorization. You're telling him to count by ones. He knows how to count by ones. You, he doesn't need practice in counting by ones. What he needs is to memorize these. And the only way, for example, supposing you had to memorize uh, a soliloquy from Hamlet. And you came to the third line and you said, gee, uh, I can't remember. Somebody's not going to tell you to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> 
You don't flash you the correct line. And they say, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. That's the way you memorize. You're talking of memorization. Memorization, you see. Don't confuse that with counting. Memorization is a totally different process. What you want is the memorization to take place up there. So, and you do that with all of them, you know. It's also zero plus two, uh, uh, one plus two, two plus two, two plus three, uh, two plus four, et cetera. And you do all of the tables right through the 12, all of them, and you have them memorized in the same way. It's so easy. He doesn't have to figure anything out. You've proven, the, you've proven the truth of the fact by showing that every time you write a new combination, you show it then in concretes, in pennies. So he sees, yes, that, that two and three are five. He knows because he has seen, he has seen two, and he has seen three, and he's counted them, and he sees that that gives him five. Once he knows that, then the rest of his life he'll be dealing with the numbers themselves, not with the concretes. He doesn't have to do that anymore. You see. <coughs> That's all he needs. What you want him is to memorize the number of facts. And then you apply the same technique. You have him go to first learn the uh, etc. And he can make his own table on the basis of the pennies. You can have your child actually make his own addition table. And once he has the table, you want him to memorize the table. How do you get him to memorize the table? Well, first he reads it down. Then you cover up the answers and have him read them down again. Whenever he makes an error, you flash the correct answer. And then cover it back up. You don't have him go through the business of counting by ones because that delays memorization and it gets him stuck on counting by ones. And I know that for a fact because I was taught uh, arithmetic in a very poor manner. And I can tell you, when you spend your life counting by ones, it's miserable. <coughs> you know, it really slows you down. And you don't have the confidence you should have in your memory. What you want to do is create a confidence in memory. So it's so automatic that that youngster doesn't have to stop and wonder whether he's correct or not. Now, of course, in our, alpha, in our arithmetic system, there are so many patterns and cross-checks. For example, you're going to teach, uh, you will, when you teach uh, two, uh, counting by uh, ones and then counting by twos, uh, I mean, and when you have them uh, twos, threes, they will see that two plus three equals five, but also three plus two, you see because they will be memorizing each one of these columns, checks, and they're going to be memorized up there because this is the computer. Computer. <laughs> Sorry, computer. The computer is up there. And you want it to become permanent, memorized knowledge. That's because arithmetic is a memory system. To use it proficiently, you must Memorize to use it proficiently. Otherwise, you spend your life counting by ones, and you can stand there, count, you know, stand there trying to figure out things, and uh, it's it's not very, it's not good, not good at all. All right, so that's the way you teach addition. You teach subtraction in the same way. When you get to multiplication, there are marvelous. You teach multiplication very beautifully, very easily. First, counting by ones. They know how to count by ones. You have one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. You can also demonstrate it in pennies, the multiplication facts, you know, like counting by twos. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21. No. I don't like doing 22. Oh, I'm not doing 22. <laughs> Threes. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, and uh, 36. Fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eights, nines. Now, easy to learn to count by ones. 
These are the rank account by two. This is the introduction to multiplication. Threes are a little harder. Fours are a little harder, but they all have patterns. You see three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, thirty. Now you're back to threes again. Three, six, the next one will be nine. You see? There's a pattern in this thing. Uh, ten, of course, is easy to count by tens. It's easy to count by elevens. Twelve is a little more difficult. Nines is very simple. Most people don't realize that counting by nines is very easy because you have nine, eighteen, twenty-seven, thirty-six, forty-five, fifty-four, sixty-three, seventy-two, eighty-one, ninety, ninety-nine, Next, 108, right? But you can see what you have. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, 9, 8. Next one can be 7, right? 6, 7, 6, 5, 8. And that's how, that's how we, uh, we teach them. They learn the pattern. So there are so many cross checks in the arithmetic system that even if they forget a particular fact, that the cross checks will enable them to uh, to get the right answer. Well, the best way to memorize, as, as, as I said, when you have you know two times two, two times three, two times four, two times five, and they see the patterns, and you cover up the correct answers, and have them go down the list, and when they don't know the answer, you flash the correct answer, they're going to memorize it. And if you do this long enough, they will become wizards. They will memorize the system. And they will be able to master this marvelous arithmetic system of all of its cross checks and patterns. You see, it's the patterns that create the interest. In more arithmetic today, they don't teach us any patterns. They think it's a bunch of you know scattered, broken up uh, facts that have no meaning, no connection. But here they'll see the marvel of this whole arithmetic system. It's just really one of the great marvels of the world. This this arithmetic system, and incidentally. When I was going to school, it was called arithmetic. Today, there is no such thing as arithmetic. You know, everything is what? Math. And that includes everything, including the kitchen sink. Arithmetic is a separate, self-contained system of counting. That's what it is. It's a counting system. And once you master it, then you can go on to other things. You can go on to, uh, jo to algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and the rest. That's, that's mathematics. That's where you're dealing with relationships. Arithmetic is a counting system. Mathematics is a, is a uh, system of relationships in which you use counting. So there's a, quite a difference between the two things, and arithmetic can be learned separately, and it should be, it should be memorized. The, the arithmetic facts, that is the addition facts, subtraction facts, multiplication facts, and the, uh, and the division facts. And of course, aside from just teaching them, you know, this way, you also have to teach them to add up columns and figures. And the carrying, all of that is in my book, all of the techniques of addition. Then you want to be able to add up whole columns of figures. So that becomes, I was uh, very automatic. I've always envied those people who can run down a column of figures and say, you know, one, two, three, because it's all up there and they have confidence in their memories. Those of us who don't have confidence in our memories stop in the middle somewhere and have to count by ones, you know, just to make sure we didn't slip up somewhere. And that's because we were not properly trained. But once your memory is properly trained, then you can go down that column of figures and feel quite confident that they're correct because you've been trained to have that confidence, you see, in arithmetic. So that's the way you should teach arithmetic. Uh, and I, in my book, I cover the four arithmetic functions. And I also go into telling time and also decimals and fractions. So you'll find it as a good introduction to arithmetic for your children from, I'd say, the first to the third or fourth grade. You'd be able to use this book for the first three or four grades of teaching.
But remember, the most important thing is don't tell them to stop and figure it out. And before you start giving them arithmetic problems, let's give them a chance to first memorize the arithmetic facts. And it can be like a game, you see, before you give them arithmetic problems. And then, of course, you can deal with money, dollars and cents, and that sort of thing. But you see, in the old days, in the, in the, at the very beginning, calculation, calc, the word is pebble. Calc stands for the word pebble. So they used to use uh, pebbles. And as a matter of fact, in the Soviet Union, they still use abacuses throughout the world for their counting, because so that's the way uh, that's the way people counted in those days. They used these little pebbles and things. And then, of course, we uh, the Hindus invented a place value system. And let me explain to you what place value is. You have, for example, you have the that's thirty two. You have 302, place value. In other words, it depends on what place the number is to get another. In, for example, in Greek counting, they would say this would be uh, 5, 3 plus 2. But not in our system. Our system, you have ones, you have the ones column. You have the tens column. You have the one hundreds column. You have the thousands column. Now, how do we get this zero? Well, when they were, when they, the Hindus were counting, they had these, uh, they had these, uh, they used these counting uh, boxes, and what they did was. Uh, let me see how I did. They had a counting board. That's right, a counting board. And the discovery of zero was an accident brought about by an attempt to make an unambiguous permanent record of a counting board operation. For example, you wanted to count, uh, you had, say you had three in the ones column, but you didn't have anything in the tens column. So what are you going to put there? You have an empty column. So they invented the zero to stand for nothing. Empty, you see. And then you had three, you see, 300. So this gave you 303, you see. And that's how we have our place value system. It was done by these, uh, by these counting boards that they used in India. That's the origin of our place value system. So that our numbers, we know our numbers by their position, their positional value. This is the ones, this is the tens, this is the hundreds, and this is the thousands, you see. That's how we know it. That's why we can say 3,255. And that's the beauty of the system. The invention of the zero, they figured they had to have something to stand for nothing. And so they invented the zero. And you couldn't have modern mathematics without it. It just shows you how crucial inventions in the history of mankind uh, have given us uh, incredible tools. A thing like zero or the alphabet. All of these amazing inventions, technological inventions, which our schools consider terribly unimportant, you know, but they expect to they expect to maintain a civilization on the basis of, the basis of ignorance of the basics. So that's the uh, story of it, it's all explained here. I haven't read it in quite a while, so I'm a little rusty. But um, I think you'll find it quite interesting how we went from Roman numerals, as you can imagine. It's quite difficult multiplying Roman numerals. You know. Right here's eleven times eleven. How do you multiply that? <laughs> Six. Is that eleven? No, that's nine. That's nineteen. I'm sorry. Here's eleven. This is eleven. Pardon? No, X is nine. 
can see the Romans, but we'll probably just show you how the Romans wrote. And this was for years and years. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, you see. That's the way that's the way they counted. It was basically a mixed system of pebbles, of units, and hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs. <clears throat> B stood for five. They just were tired of going like this. <laughs> and they said, hey, let's call it Z. <laughs> and, uh, I heard this. <laughs> so the, yes, yeah, it looks like a full hand, you see, the B. They used very concrete things to represent numbers. But we use a very, we use ten symbols for our entire number system. Believe it or not, you can write any number in the world from zero to infinity with zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the end. That's all you need. How do you like that? A system based on ten, an entire system counting based on just 10. Isn't that the most remarkable invention you can think of? You can do so much with so little. It's the same with the alphabet. You can write any word that you can possibly invent with those 26 letters. Look at the remarkable tools that the, are found, that the, the, the ancients gave us and which the schools don't even know how to use. You see. That's the beauty of all of this. And you teach your children the beauty of all of this. Say, hey, Johnny, Susie, do you know that you can write any number? You can do any calculation with just these 10 symbols. Well, they're impressed. Very impressed. All right, I'm going to stop here, and then I'll open up the discussion.